Right there YouTubers, how are you doing? I'm doing absolutely great and I hope you guys are as well. And this video is a super exciting video, well certainly for me and it's one I've been looking forward to. It is the Caliber Gun Cricket Mini Carbine. Brand new for 2017 and I, I think I am probably going to be the first certainly English YouTube review of this rifle. There has been a few sneak peeks at the gun shows in America on this rifle and there's a couple of uh, Czechos Vacuum uh, semi reviews out on the internet but I think I'm going to be probably the first person to do this and I'm going to have to say an absolute massive thank you thank you out there to Johnny who's on my uh, channel is one of my subscribers he managed to get this rifle from Portugal, got it imported into the UK and then he's given it to a gunsmith who has then legally set it to 12 foot pound for the UK market and then he's turned around and said, Steve, I love your channel, I love your reviews, I'm away for a week or so, do you want to borrow it? And I bit his hand off, of course I wanted to borrow it. So thank you Johnny, thank you, thank you. So what have we got here? Well, like I said, this is the new model. Now I have actually got this in the wooden stock version. Um, like a walnut finish on here um, and you can get it also in the Monte Carlo version uh, which I'll put a link up probably about here just put a picture of it up to show you that now the main difference obviously in the Monte Carlo version is it's got extra holes in the stock for lightness it's got uh, adjustable cheek pieces and butt plate on it as well but that is the only difference everything else the whole of the mechanisms is exactly the same on there currently you can get these only in 2.2 um, but I'm sure sometime in the future they will come out in 1.77 and 2.5 and of course all FAC and high powered for you guys especially out in the States and the Netherlands that have no problems using those rifles with the law. Let's move straight into the rifle itself. Now the most obvious thing that you're going to notice is that now with the Cricket it has moved into a semi bullpup configuration. That is to say that the cock in the lever and mechanism here is no longer at the end of the rifle. It has now been moved forward a good six to seven inches here. So originally you had to cock it by pulling back the lever up here and pushing it forward. This is now all beautifully in one place and of course this rifle is safe at the moment and it is just so beautiful to be able just to cock it like so and fire it off. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful that they've done this. You know, um, I just love bull pups. I love the weight of the bull pups and the, how they're such a short rifle and you don't have this long cantilever aching your arm. But I never did like the way that it was up here. You got used to it, but this, best of both worlds. Absolute best of both worlds. So that is the most obvious difference um, with, the, with this carbine mini is the fact that the cocking handle's up here. Another major, major difference that you're going to find about this rifle is that the barrel now is a fully floated barrel. It's not suspended, and we'll see that later when I do a bit of a breakdown, and it is fully shrouded as well. So, big major difference going on there as well. And another major difference is that in here we now have a safety catch. A little safety catch we can just push forward, pull backwards, totally resettable, and is not automatic. If it's all the way back, lock the trigger out, all the way forward, trigger will move. So those are the major, major differences with the Calibre Cricket. Apart from that, those that are familiar with the original Cricket, a lot of the rifle is going to look pretty much the same. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rifle and see what we've got and what we get. And before you guys ask, um, no, I have absolutely no idea on availability. Um, I've tried calling my, my local gun shop where I got my cricket from, who are one of the major importers, um, and they've not been able to give me any availability on the rifle. Um, as for pricing, I've seen a pricing on one site that sold out for 1,300 euros. You work that out, that's around about 1,000, maybe 1,100 pounds, which is very much in keeping with what the original cricket cost, which was 1,000 pounds for the 2.2 version. So um, I'm sure in the next couple of um, weeks or months we will start getting official notice from the gun dealers as to when the rifles are going to be available out there. But I know a lot of people are clambering for these and I think they are going to sell very, very quickly. 
Okay, so let's move around the rifle. So what we have is on the back, is we have a butt plate. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether or not these are gonna come with movable butt plates. There's a Allen bolt in there, and it looks like you can take this butt plate out, but this one is a static butt plate by the looks of it. The Monte Carlo will have, uh, Monte Carlo stock will have adjustable butt plates and an adjustable cheek piece. Obviously, this one is just solid wood, and unfortunately, we have lost the magazine storage. So this has no magazine storage in here for spare magazines, just a solid wood, or in the Monte Carlo, this is just a big hole here. So uh, we've got a nice thumb pistol grip here, and unlike a lot of rifles, I love this pistol grip. Um, it just works beautifully. I don't have the greatest, the biggest hands in the world, um, and some rifles I'm finding that I'm at, literally, if I just try and show you this with my fingers, sometimes I'm having to street reach so much that I can only get the tip of my finger comfortably around the trigger and that is not how you should be shooting. You should be using the total pad of your finger to give yourself a nice consistent and straight pull on the trigger. This just works beautifully, it is perfect in there. And talking about the trigger, um, the trigger is a very, very, very nice two stage and it's got a big flat blade on there and it's got a nice pull back on the first stage and a crisp pull on the second stage. And in here as well, while we're there, we have the safety catch, which you can just move forward and backwards like so. Okay, so let's uh, move back a bit more and come back up to the working action itself. So this is the standard cricket uh, working action that we can see here. Nothing here has changed. It looks a little bit more polished, um, a little bit manufactured better. Um, there's some nicer, nicer lines on here. It's not so rough and ready as the, ri the original cricket on here. But um, cocking lever here, we pull back, and that's cocking. This is your magazine locking selector, and you pull it back and it's on a spring. So for those that have seen my original Cricut video and my magazine modifications, it's exactly the same. So if you don't like the loading on the original Cricut, which is really is a two-handed, because you've got to pull this back, you've got to pull that back, hold it, and then slide the magazine in, then let that go, then bring it forward, make sure the catch is forward, and then you can take your shot. And it is a pain, to be honest, and I'm really disappointed that uh, Calibre Gun haven't actually changed this at all. Not changed it. Um, and they haven't even put the, mod the modification, because of, uh, or I'll show you one night, or I'll show you the other rifle, but you can put an extra little s slit in here, and then you can actually make that so that the magazine lock will, will lock itself so that you can then one-handed load and then flip it out of the way. That's not been done, um, so that's a shame, it's a shame. But then we have got the beautiful semi ball pop. We've got the safety catch, we've got the floating barrel and the full shroud, so it's a shame. It really, really been nice. At the top we have, at the top here, we have a Piccadilly rail, which is attached directly onto the actual block itself, and it's attached just about make up by two screws. Now, it looks like that this will actually come off, this whole Picatinny rail will come off and you could replace it with a longer one, maybe. And the reason I say that is that this Picatinny rail is actually a lot shorter than the original one. So I can see that there may be a problem not being able to get the right eye relief, not being able to get the scope further enough forward here with a standard optical scope. So if you look at the size of that, by the time you arrive about here, and you've got the rifle and you've got the you got your standard scope on there, you haven't got much room to move this around. So we'll find out, because I'm gonna obviously gonna to try it and see what it's like. But if that is a problem, I think you'd probably be able to take these off and just replace this rail with a longer one, as long as it's as solid on there. So then we move down the rest of the stock. Um, the stock removes with a simple bolt on the bottom of there, undo that, and the whole stock comes off all in one piece, dead easy, a couple of minutes, less than a minute. Alan Key needed for that. Let's move across now, and then we have the barrel itself. So the barrel across here is fully shrouded, and what we're gonna do is just unscrew the barrel from here, unscrew the shroud, slide it off, and then we can see that's the actual barrel itself. We put the actual shroud back on, we just slide it back on like so, drop it in, and then we just slide it around and twist, and it's in. So that's the barrel across there, obviously this is 2.2. We then have the air cylinder underneath. Now this air cylinder, I'm just having to double check the dimensions, but um, you'll see later it's actually shorter than the original Cricut. So I think we've got less air capacity in here, but uh, 
I'm going to have to do some shot counts to work out how that works. At the top end, and I still hate the way that they do this, is I do not like looking at it, especially if you're on a range and you're trying to be safe, keep your rifle down there, but then you've got to look over the end of your gun to see, especially when it's so close to the barrel. There's your pressure gauge. Um, this rifle is stamped for 300 bar fill. Um, the UK old crickets were 200 by the time they were fettled. Um, I've been told that this one, that he's been told by the gunsmith that's fettled with it to get it to 12 foot pound, 250 bar fill. So it um, be interesting to see what the shot count is, that's certainly going to help a bit. And to fill it is your standard cricket, pull forward, spring, and in there is your fill adapter hole, quick fill adapter in there. It's going to be a slow fill, um, when you finish, just close it back up and then again that's on a spring load, nice and simple. At the bottom, the stock that is nice and flat so that you can pre-drill this out yourself and fit a bipod on there which a lot of people will want to do as we can see it's a very square stock here um, and what I'll do is I'll take it off we'll show you the actual stock itself so apart from that there is not a lot more to the actual rifle itself um, we do have a nice cricket little embossed logo stamped into the woodwork here and there's one on the other side as well and all in all, I love this. It is, just feels beautiful. It feels nice. Um, you can just pick it up, the weight of it, they, even though they've moved the rifle forward a little bit, they've given it just enough weight in the right places that it just sits balanced beautifully there. Now obviously we've got to put the scopes and the bipods and everything else on it as well, but we'll see how that goes. Magazine. Magazine is a 14 shot magazine for 2.2. Um, it's the same as the old magazine with slight cosmetic changes. This part here now is like a silver colour, but the magazine is all metal with a couple of rings on there. 2-2, two, two, 14 shots. To load the magazine, this is where the fun comes, and I am not going to be able to do this properly two-handed. So, so the first thing you've got to do is you need to cock the rifle. The rifle is now cocked. Your magazine. Now we've got an empty magazine that's quite handy here. And you need to lift this little side lever up and pull it back. And you can see inside there that when I do that, the magazine selector, this one here, goes backwards. We then take our magazine, we slide it into the middle, and then we wiggle it until we actually then can feel it in there and we can feel it clicking. And then this little lever, we need to pick it up, and after we've cocked, the rifle we need to push that lever forward if we don't and we leave it down in the bottom position which you can just about make out here so if we leave it in the bottom position here you'll only get one shot and in, in other words every time I cycle it will not turn the magazine so if we watch and I fire and now I'm going to cycle the magazine has not turned what I have to do is take this lever and push it forward and now when I cock, you can see the magazine turns. Very peculiar. And there's many people have given reasons, mainly for hunting reasons, etc., why it's been done like that. I am not a fan of it at all. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to strip this down and we're going to take the stock off, take the shroud off. And I want to show you the mechanism on here. And what I'm also going to do exactly the same with my old cricket, the version 1 cricket, to show you the major differences. A lot of people sort of look at this and go, no new design. Well, actually, there is quite a lot that's changed um, from the barrel, from the shroud, from the tube, from the linkages. Quite a lot of it has changed, um, and all to accommodate this bullpup, semi bullpup, um, like this. And oh, I just can't stop doing that. It's so nice, it's so nice. So we're going to take it to the table, we're going to go handheld I'm afraid, uh, so hopefully we'll be alright and uh, we'll see what we can get. Okay, so I've gone handheld here and I've done this deliberately because I just want to show you how much has changed in this rifle. So if we come down and have a look, we can see here that we have the uh, cocking mechanism and the magazine bolt. So if we look in there, if I pull the magazine part back you can see, and that's spring loaded. We come across, we've got the breech area here, and we can see that the Picatinny rail is attached directly onto the top of the breech itself. Now the barrel itself now is 100% a free floating barrel, as we can see with the shroud, and underneath we have the air supply. 
But, like I said, I'm lucky. I've got the old version one uh, of the, the Cricut, the Calibre Cricut, and there it is here. And hopefully we can see these both together. And I've actually got a ruler here to line these up so you can see the difference. So, let's take a look at the old one. We can see we've got the same cocking here. We can see that obviously there's a different quality. Here's the new one. And here's the old one. Slightly, slightly different. There's, there's hardly anything in it. And you can see I've actually got myself a lock on mine. And if I just push that forward, you can see that extra little notch that I've cut here. That allows me to take my magazine and lock it open. Cricket, you should really do it with the new one. It looks like it's possible to do on the new one. Right, but if we then come along and we have a look, we can see that on the old version one, it hasn't actually got a floating barrel. This barrel is actually suspended here and here via a complete um, assembly unit, which then has the longer, and we can see the size there of the Picatinny rail, a longer Picatinny rail on the top. If we look at the shroud also on the old one compared to the new one, in fact, let's just put them both together. Here we go, both shrouds together. Look at the difference in the size, the top one being a new one. So the shroud on the, on the old one, basically, all it did was cover the lower third of the barrel. Whereas on the top one, it takes the whole of the barrel. The barrel, as we can see, is a lot, lot shorter than on the original one. So again, the top one is the new Mini, the bottom one is the old version one. Shorter barrel on the new Mini, hence the reason why it's called a Mini Carbine. And then if we actually, this is the really interesting part, is if we now have a look at the tube, the reserve tube for the air, it is about two inches shorter than the one on the old rifle. So that's going to be interesting. It looks, I haven't done any proper measurements yet, but it looks like it's the same diameter. So we actually have less capacity in the top tube in the new version than we do in the old one. So this is going to be quite interesting. And of course then if we take a look at the old bullpup in the classic bullpup with the cock and lever right up by your eye, by the top of your cheek, trigger all the way down the other end, we can see we've got this massive linkage system here that you would then alter here and alter here to change your two-stage trigger. Obviously in the new version we can see this is a hell of a lot shorter. Um, it looks nice and made as well, to be honest, and it just looks much, much sweeter because obviously the cocking handle is so much closer to the trigger. And if we go and have a look around here and we look at the safety catch, you can see that the safety catch is really, literally, it's just a sliding bolt. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's just slides a piece of metal in the way of the trigger mechanism. Simple, but works. All right, guys. So we've moved outside and you can see that I fitted the mini carbine with my trusted X sight on here. So I know what pellets that this rifle likes. I've already played and I'm not going to do a pellet review. So we're going to use the Ablos, um, 2 2 obviously, and we're going to take some shots at uh, 20 meters. I'm going to do four lots of shots at four targets and we're just going to see what the grouping's like. And let's say that it's at 20 meters, camera down range. We've also got the scope camera and this camera as well. So. Let's get some shooting done, see how good this is. Okay, now I've put a card in the sight, I should be able to get some sight recordings as well, so let's do the last two lots of 14.
Well, that's four, lots of 14. Let's go and see how we've done. So, is the cricket reliable? Is it accurate? Now, you all know my shooting. I am not the best. I like the rifles. I've really got to practice for my shooting. Right, what I'm going to show you is four lots of 14 shots. So that's four times 14, 28, 56 shots. 56 shots. That's just nuts. And I wasn't taking my time. Okay, it's 20 meters, so I'm gonna move out a little bit further and see how far I can get actually get in my garden. But I think I've got one, that's me. I know that was me. I did that one. Just look at that. That is crazy. 14 shots. In fact, I was getting tricks being played in my mind because I couldn't even see where the center of the target because I was just making that hole just slightly bigger. That's just crazy. In the right hands, this rifle is lethally accurate. So the cricket, still got its fantastic barrel, its fantastic groupings. Look at that. I, I can't do that again with any rifle. Look at this. And I'm not even got a rest, not even got a bipod. I'm just leaning on some cushions. Brilliant. Okay, we're trying this again at 35 metres. I've got a chair now, so I'm a little bit more comfortable. All right, guys, we're back inside now um, in the warm, and let's time to do the summing up of the Calibre Cricket. Now, you know that I'm totally unbiased, um, unsponsored. I've been loaned this rifle, but I am going to have to admit a little bit of bias to is that I love my original Cricket. And I'm trying to put that to one side, but I can't. This is beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a perfect, perfect upgrade to the original Cricket, and I want one of these. All I can't do is work out my mind whether I want a wooden one or I want the Monte Carlo stock version. I hope they bring a tactical out as well, that would be really nice on there. But let's be objective about this, there are a few problems with this rifle. Right, number one problem is that with this particular rifle being one of the very early ones is that the finish on the stock is not great. We can see there's some marks up here, um, there's some marks around the butt as well you can probably make them out on some of the images and pictures I've done now the original crickets when they came out of the wooden stocks they had a few problems as well but they soon got rectified um, so that's just I think it's a process a manufacturing process where they just tighten their quality control up on it all but the rest of the the barrel the bluing the metal work on it, it is sublime it is very 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 high standard I'm, I'm, I'm loving it it's uh, I just can't stop looking at it as well what else have we got the rail on the top is a bit short it is certainly a lot shorter than the original one as well and the original the owner of this rifle tells me he has sometimes has problems with uh, getting eye relief on his scopes now I've tried it and I got no problems at all and I put a picture up probably around about here to show you uh, with a normal optical scope on there and I had zero problems but everybody can be uh, a bit different so with their eye relief and their scopes depending on the scope you use but I reckon you could swap this out if you really wanted to and put a slightly longer one on here um, but like I said I had no problems and obviously with my digital zoom on there zero problems whatsoever okay the elephant in the room still with the cricket is the loading <sighs> I just wish they would change this I really do um, to load a magazine in, you've got to pull it back, pull this lever back, and now you've got to get the magazine in now. It is a three-handed job, or it's a two-handed job if you're not holding onto the rifle. Um, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. Still hate it. It's the only thing I hate about the crickets is that mechanism there. Um, and it becomes an absolute pain in the backside. And I've also found with this rifle and the magazine that came with it, to take the magazine out, I could just do that, pull the magazine, turn it sideways and the magazine would drop out. Doesn't do it with the new one. Sometimes it sticks. Now it might just be the actual magazine and the fault tolerations, the quality control on that magazine. Certainly with the older Cricut magazines it didn't 
in this rifle didn't have a problem but the, the magazine that came with this rifle sometimes I just found it difficult to get it out um, I don't know if that's going to be across the board all the time with the rifles I don't know it may be it may be not um, on a side note I've actually worked out now and I've been told in a bit of research what this lever is actually here for and why it has two positions so when it's in its bottom position it doesn't cycle the magazine and why do you want that well for hunting Imagine now you're out in the field, you see a target, squirrel, you cock the rifle, you're ready to take the shot, and the target goes and it disappears. You no longer want to take that shot, but you've got a pellet in the chamber. If you're in the single position here, you can actually pull the cocking handle back, pull the trigger to release the spring, and take the hammer out of tension, but you've still got a pellet up in the chamber. Now, 10 minutes later, squirrel comes back again. You can now recock without cycling the magazine and take your shot. If you're in the forward position, every time you do this, it cycles the magazine and you run the risk of double loading. So that's the reason behind it. Um, and I understand it now, and it's actually quite a nifty little design on there. The only thing you've got to remember is that if you're out and doing a bit of plinking or you're wanting the magazine to cycle each time, is that when you do cock it, you put it forward, you put the lever forward so that it then cycles every time you cock the rifle. Um, but I understand how that works now, but the loading on the Cricut is still the same. It's still bloody awful. Okay, so what else? Price. Yeah. It's still over the $1,000. We're looking at $1,300 for the original Cricut, and I expect this to be just as much, if not more. But then you get what you pay for, and you certainly do get the quality with this rifle, certainly. But like I said, I am struggling really with this to find some problems with it. They are just some of the standard problems that I found with the rifle. Apart from that, you know what? I can live with that. I certainly can. So let's move on to the good parts. Well, quite simply, I'm just going to drop the rifle, put the rifle down on the floor here. The good parts. Well, let's get straight to it. The accuracy. I am not a great shot, as we all know. Um, many people have commented as well. But 25 metres, that's 64 shots, 14 in each one. Here is a British one penny piece. And it covers every single shot group. And in fact, the bottom one is about the half of a one penny piece. This one here, sorry, up the top right. This is half a one penny piece, half that size. It is stupidly, stupidly accurate. I wanna show you a target that you didn't actually see on camera. Um, I zeroed the rifle up with the ATN, took about three, four shots to get that zeroed up. And then I put a fresh magazine of 14 shots in. And that's what I got, that was my first Proper shoot with the rifle, 14 shots. There's my penny piece again. Look at that, it just covers it perfectly. That is just crazy, crazy, crazy. I then moved out to 35 yards um, and I was west resting against the trash bin um, and I was going diagonally across my garden. That's how I can get my maximum range in my garden, so it wasn't a stable platform. Um, and that was at 35 yards. Now you can ignore a couple of these shots up the top and down the bottom. That was me, definitely me, and you'll probably see it on the scope cam. But again, here's my penny piece. There is 11 shots there in that penny piece. Crazily, crazily, in my hands, that is accurate. You can imagine what it's like in somebody who knows what they're doing hands. So, you know, that is definitely a massive, massive uh, plus there. This, this rifle is deadly accurate. It carries on from its predecessor, and with the free floating barrel, I would even go as far to say that this rifle is better at accuracy than the original Cricket on it. So the quality we've spoke about is beautiful quality. The weight, they've kept the weight down as well. They've turned it into a mini car, uh, um, a semi bulb up, but literally only added a couple of inches on the length of the rifle to incorporate that by changing the diameters, the size of the barrel, etc. It's still got a nice low report, but it is still quite loud um, for backyard plinker, depending on what your neighbours are like, but it is still fairly loud-ish on that. The safety catch. I am so proud of them to put the safety catch. I'm so pleased. 
that is so desperately needed. I am a stickler for safety at times, um, and I just like to have that safety catch there. And uh, the fact that it, you can just move it in and out, it's nice, simple design, not complicated, not automatic, and resettable. I love that, that's great on there. Shot count, right. This rifle is stamped for 300 bar. The original Cricket was stamped for 300 bar as well, and my UK original Cricket, uh, we were told only to fill it up to 12, uh, up to 200 bar on the cylinder when you're filling the rifle up, so that you didn't damage the seals on that. This looks like it's using pretty much the same tubes, right, a little bit smaller, and that is also stamped for 300 bar. The owner of this rifle, when he had it uh, played with and set to UK standard, was told that he could fill it to 250. I didn't want to do that. Uh, so I have filled this up to 200 because it's not my rifle. I don't want to be breaking seals and I don't know how this has been changed in the UK and what tolerances are at it. But a 200 bar fill on this, um, I gave up counting after I got over 150 shots. I actually lost count and I was down to about 90 bar. I suspect that this rifle is going to be keeping the shot count for um, compared to the original Cricket, I reckon it's going to be pretty close to it to do that. And of course that does depend on the power rating on this. And people have, are asking me whether or not what's the feet per second. Again, that depends. I can't test that. I'm stuck to 12 foot pound. So with my Diablos, I'm kicking out 560 meters per second, uh, feet per second, which gives me like about 11.5 foot pounds. Uh, pressure on there, but shot count is very very similar to the original one. I would say on that um, Yes, the air tube is slightly smaller on it, but uh, I It's difficult to tell and it's difficult to say and um, I'm sure that those numbers But when you're starting to hit come on, let's be honest. We're starting to hit over 150 shots with one of these Yeah, I think the original one was 180 and I expect this to be extremely close to that and of course the rifle itself is regulated as well so even then when you're starting to dip down into those lower numbers and you've got the air reserve is down fairly low you're not losing quality in those shots whatsoever so summing up what did I say this is a very much long-awaited rifle for me I think that this is a remarkably great improvement over the original Cricket I love the way that the semi ball pup is set up here. I love it. The floating barrel, the looks, the quality, the safety catch. And I'm dying to get my hands on the Monte Carlo stock. I really want one of those. And I hope they actually bring out a tactical one as well. That would be really, really nice. So would I recommend this rifle? Most definitely. Most definitely. If you can afford the price and you're after a semi ball pup with full features in it, this is bang on the money for it. Um, it's stupidly accurate, it's light, it's comfortable. The only problem you're going to get is getting hold of one, probably, because these things are going to sell like wildfire. They're just going to go and disappear out there. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Like I said, this is probably one of the first reviews that you're going to see, proper reviews of the rifle out there. Um, please like, subscribe, and um, also... I've been asked a lot of times, um, can we donate to the channel, because we know you're not being paid to do any of it. Yes, you can. There is a link down in the description that takes you to PayPal on there. One pound, two pound, whatever you want to add in, it all adds up. If anything, it pays for a little bit of petrol money for me, for when I actually go and collect the rifles from people. You know, at the end of the day, I am not making money out of this YouTube channel. I'm actually losing money. Uh, the money I've made on the adverts, it just disappears on pellets and on petrol and all that stuff. So if you'd like to uh, donate, please down below. But as usual, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. And uh, like I said, don't forget to like and share um, and subscribe to the channel. And catch you later. Bye-bye.